Welcome to the Tomb Raider Level Editor Basic Guide. In this chapter, I will show you how to implement gameplay interactions. Section A. Movable Objects Movable objects are types of objects that can animate or interact with the world in some form such as doors, traps and enemies. Let's try filling this area with some movables. Try hiding some pickup objects in this dark corner here. Place animating objects, doors, even a trap and an enemy to surprise Lara outside here. Small warning about door placements. You should only place them on room portals. Otherwise, if you place them in the middle of a room, an invisible block will appear behind them. Be sure to avoid this as this may result in some unforeseen bugs as you build your level. Now let's test our new addition. Try taking the medipacks we've placed in this dark corner. It is a good idea to reward players who like to go off the beaten path. Uh oh, the door isn't opening, and our animating object isn't animating. What went wrong? Section B Activation Triggers Some objects in your level need to be activated to work, and for that we use triggers. There are two simple ways to activate an object. Select an object and then select the floor. On the Triggers panel, click on the plus sign to add a trigger on the selected square. You can even make a trigger cover an area by selecting it and adding a trigger for that object. In this case, we want both doors to open at the same time, regardless of which tile you step on first. Now, let's add triggers for our trap and enemy. The other trigger type allows you to activate an object from the moment the level begins, so you will not need to place a trigger somewhere. In this case, we want this animating object to be active before Lara even sees it. To achieve that, double-click on the object and check the 5 code bits. Remember to avoid using this on enemies to prevent bugs. Let's test. Okay, oops, let's try that again. Everything is working as intended. You can even add a timer to the door triggers to make them timed. Edit the same triggers from the trigger panel and increase the timer. Note that zero means there is no timer. Perhaps five seconds would do. That works! I have made a little passage here that will loop us back into the first room. Let's see if it works again. Now let's try one more thing. One-shot triggers. Triggers that will only work once. Edit the triggers once more and check the one-shot tick box. Now let's see in-game. Watch them close and then loop back. See? Only works once. Let's see what you could pull with that in the future. Section C. Special Triggers There are many special trigger types that allow the player to interact with the environment differently. Let's look at Anti-Triggers. These triggers have different effects on different objects. We'll test them on these two doors. See what happens when we step on the Anti-Trigger for the door. They close. For our next special trigger, we're going to use Puzzle Hole 6 as an example. We will add a special trigger for this puzzle hole on the same square it is placed on. Make sure you have selected the key trigger type only for the puzzle hole. Then place regular triggers for whatever you want to activate on the same square. In this case, I want to activate both doors. We're going to have to place puzzle item 6 somewhere here to use it on the puzzle hole. Testing. And working as intended. Try switch types now. Place a switch and place a switch trigger under it. 
Similarly, place the regular triggers of the objects you want to activate. As we see in game, switches can be turned on and off. If you want a switch to only work once, set the one shot property on the switch trigger only. As you see now, the switch will only work one time. The one shot property works on various trigger types, so go and experiment. Our last trigger type is a heavy trigger. Heavy triggers can be activated by moving pushable objects on top of them, or having enemies or rolling balls move over them. Let's try placing a heavy trigger and a heavy anti-trigger for those doors. Now, when the object is pushed on this little pad we've created, the doors will open. If we pull it off, it will give the illusion that the pad is required to keep the doors open. But in reality, we've just moved the pushable on top of a heavy anti-trigger that only it can activate. The following trick I'm about to show works on various triggers, and special triggers as well. If you want two activations required to open a door, you'll have to split the code bits between several switches or keyholes. For this example, we'll place two puzzle holes. In key trigger for the first puzzle hole, keep one and two code bits active. And for the second puzzle hole key trigger, I will keep three, four and five code bits checked. Now place a regular trigger for both doors on the two squares. You should have three triggers on each square now. Place the puzzle item somewhere so we can test this. Congratulations! You have the skills to create the best and most wonderful... Oh, not again. This is the end of chapter 4 of the basic guide. I hope this has been helpful to you.